The interior of the house was rather modest, even though it was poor looking. Most of the time, Kula visited such places when they were in a state of ruin, not in a state of current occupancy, made this way by his own invasions of course, and he had noticed a crudely assembled news terminal and some basic kitchen appliances as he was surveying the abode. If you are trying to gain my mercy by showing me how poor you live, it is not going to work. The Emperor stated his position right out of the gate. I don't expect mercy from the likes of you. Gamry shook his head. You were never good at that anyway. Again with the insolence, Kula thought. And the Emperor could simply not decide whether or not this was annoying or amusing. Somewhere in between, maybe, most likely? His host was probably a kind of old man who just wanted to while away his remaining time with some cryptic discussions about the destructive influence of his family over his home world, yada yada yada. And uh, yeah, okay, that was almost moving, he admitted. Almost. Let me guess, saving you the trouble. My father is responsible for the sorry state of your planet. You'll try to give me some sort of environmental lesson, hoping that I may understand my errors and turn my ways around thanks to your soppy tale that you are about to impart. Am I missing something? Kula walked around the house looking rather bored, but to his surprise, this did not irritate Gamry, as the turtle man smiled slightly. There it is. Your father also thought he had everything under control, knowing the narrative. What's that supposed to mean? The Emperor crossed his arms, lessening his tone. Why are you here? Really? Gamry sat in an old armchair, which made a painful creak once the Turtle Man had gotten himself comfortable, descending onto the soft surface. I have already told you that I am trying to recover my lost limbs. Isn't it obvious? To heal myself, advance our medical technology forwarding my own goals and allowing my empire to progress. And yet, you come alone, with no entourage. There is something different about you. Why would you need me and my kelp? What I need them for is none of your business. Kula started off grand, but then brought it down rather coolly. If you won't be truthful with me, I am not going to help. <laughs> Gamry was having fun with this. And you already know that I am not afraid of death or pain. They are holding me back from discovering my true power. He could see an interesting spark glistening in the old man's eyes. Finally, he got him hooked onto something. That might mean he might spill the beans. So, power is what you are after. May I ask why? You are one of the more powerful beings in the galaxy. You can destroy whole planets with a wag of your finger. Why do you want more? There are beings stronger than I, old man. Some are here to merely keep me in check. Others may be malicious in intent and dangerous to my empire. If I am to protect what I have, I need to continue getting stronger. Gamry pondered for a while. So you seek to become a protector of sorts. In a way, if you want to drag it out of me, I do not see how all of these things have perked your interest all of a sudden. Kula refused to sit down, continuing to pace. Because if it wasn't so selfish, it would almost feel selfless. Tell you what, if you seek Shahuro, there is a creature that you need to face. We call it Akai. Face it, and I will tell you how to get the kelp. I am not your errand boy, old man. Kula was getting impetuous about this. He did not like taking orders. And I am not a tourist guy, but... Here we are. You want my help? Find Akai. And if I kill this creature, whatever this Akai thing is. Kula was trying to be cool, but his annoyance was getting the better of him. Do whatever you please. You can find it alongside the Southern Hemisphere. Gamry handed him some primitive tracking devices for help. I hope you know that if this is a trap, you and your house. The turtle man just smiled and said nothing. Kula had had enough of this one. If killing one being was everything that could get him a way to recover his limbs, then... Okay, so be it. He departed the old man's house and, despite the rain, decided to fly towards the southern hemisphere. There wasn't much in particular landmass, as previously mentioned, but finally he got to an island that 
had some semblance of signs of civilization, or at least a former civilization. It was covered with some ruins of a previously occupied city, but to Kula's very big mysterious surprise, there were no signs of struggle or siege or bombardment, it had simply just been left to rot. What had his father done here, he thought. He explored the place for a little while. It seemed that this used to be the home of Gamry's turtle brethren, as there were some statues and leftover signs that depicted younger members of his race. So this was a heyday of sorts. But still, the tracker stopped there, and there were no signs of this Akai. Once again, Kula sighed. This was probably an errand to make him feel bad or something with the old man having some weird idea that the emperor would even care about such a thing. This was a joke, he thought. He had ended so many civilizations before. Why was this supposed to be different? It took him hours to explore the city fully, and he saw nothing special. He had been on many planets with his armored squadron before. He had brought doom to countless cultures in the past that were too foolish to join the empire, not knowing any better. So why would he care now? If the old man wasn't simply lying, this Akai creature might have been long gone and this was all just some kind of japery. After all, did Gamry even leave that shack of his? Maybe he was just an old crackpot who was the village idiot. Maybe the news hadn't reached him yet that everyone was gone. Oh well, okay. As he was about to leave, he ascended into the air and gave the island one last look. It was overgrown and filled with abandoned structures. A pretty sorry excuse of a look of a city, unworthy of conquest, he thought. There was something odd, though, that was attracting Kula's gaze, preventing him from leaving altogether. He couldn't figure it out initially, but then he did. The island was ever so slightly moving. He gave it a long, stern look, but there was no mistaking it. The Emperor looked at the rainy sky, then took a dive into the sea, and then he saw it in all of its grace. That clever old coot. Akai wasn't living on the island. It was the island. He watched this massive creature, perhaps the biggest creature he had ever seen, skimming slowly through the greenish sludge of a sea on the planet Nogame, resembling a colossal stingray. Kula rarely appreciated the natural order, the beauty of a creature. But if there was ever a being that he would have considered as beautiful? Akai was it. He started to slowly charge an attack to get this over with, but a massive eye looked at him, not attempting to flee or attack, just anticipating. There was a degree of intelligence behind that massive iris. It had been so easy just to end that experience there and then. Maybe this thing was the last of its kind. Maybe he was the last one looking at one of those. He killed for less and destroyed whole civilizations, so why is he resisting? But yet, from time to time, he could hear a low rumble in the ocean, distorted by the water, like a gentle song. The attack was growing in his hand, ready to pierce through the creature. He watched said hand, and the projectile disappeared. Damn you, Son Goku, he thought to himself, and flew to the surface, dripping with water. Then, without any shadow of a doubt, he decided to fly toward Gamri's house again. The old man was waiting for him sitting on his perch with a very big smile. Have you done it? Very funny. So, have you? The wise old eyes of Gamli were looking at him very seriously. Instead of answering, Kula deflected his question with another question. What did my father take from you? From this planet, there was a moment of silence. No one spoke for a solid minute, but finally Gamli responded with a weak, dry voice. People. There was another pause, this time slightly shorter and broken by Kula this time. I have not seen any signs of invasion, and I do not recall your kind in our force. I didn't think you were our soldiers. Not soldiers. Miners for underwater mining operations, lured by the apparent opportunity of a quick buck. When the planet that they were mining on was scavenged and deprived of their resources, they were simply left to die. All of them. Gone. I do not remember that. Kula didn't even move. He genuinely could not remember them. It was way before your time. Before he had you or your brother. 
A sob story after all. Am I supposed to feel bad for you now? The turtle man shook his head. I was a guardian of sorts for these people, as was Akai. Right now, our population is practically non-existent. I do not need your pity, Lord Kula. But if you lose sight of your people, at some point, you might find out that you are ruling over a ruin. Your kingdom is not the planets that you have conquered, or the resources that you have. It is about people. Their hearts and minds. Kula said nothing to that. Then the old man threw a small bushel in his direction. Here, as per the deal that we'd made. The emperor opened it. It was filled with smelly, dense kelp, fitting the description that he was given by Kikono. Such an unassuming thing, and yet so much potential. I can grow you more, Gamri started. I can already feel an if coming along. Kula glared at him. If you visit me from time to time. The old man finished the sentence. I was under the impression that I wasn't welcome here. Gamri smiled. And I was under the impression that your sole interest was in power. The emperor again was mute. He had had what he'd come for. Might be enough to replicate it with the laboratory. There's no need to come back here, he thought. With a bit of luck, he could never have to look that guy in the face ever again. Well, at least this is over. Thank you for your cooperation, Gamri of Nogame. He ascended from the ground. Hopefully you found what you came for. The turtle man looked into the distance. Cooler then promptly returned to orbit, where Kikono and Salsa were awaiting him aboard his personal shuttle. Monsieur Kula, do we have it? Were you successful? The Brenshin was relieved to see his master return. Indeed I was. Is this enough for you, Kikono? Oh yes, more than enough. As soon as we are back, I shall prepare the right solution. Make it quick. The universe isn't sleeping, you know. He gave the dreary little planet one last look, noticing Akae skimming slowly through the sea indistinguishable from an islet, but he knew it was Akai. Meanwhile, Gamri returned to his shack and retrieved his old guardian staff. It had been a while since he used it. He knocked three times on the floor with it, only for a staircase to appear. The old man scratched his beard and said to himself, I think I'll have to clean the entrance to the time chamber. It might have guests sooner or later. It took years to take the healing technology of the machines to the point where they could recover lost limbs. But at least the progress was visible. Kula knew that he could not rush his scientists anymore. He didn't want to end up with some imperfect appendage, as they would be a clear disadvantage to his prosthetics. He used that time to reinforce his empire from the inside as he reformed housing and civil rights. Nothing too crazy. But he had noticed that it was considerably easier to work with his subjects if they were grateful and happy. He also gave regional governments more autonomy, though if any signs of corruption appeared, he was more than willing to deal with that himself. So that was a no-go. Salza, who originally had some doubts about this new way of ruling, eventually came around after seeing Planet Brench, his homeworld, flourish in a relatively short period of time. Berry Blue looked particularly smug, but Kula never gave her the satisfaction of acknowledging it. His mind was with Kikono's research, something that, after he would benefit from himself, he would give to the people. He didn't see an issue with that. Soldiers are able to heal from injuries faster, as are workers after work accidents. It benefited everybody. A strong society needed strong foundations, he said. And the more he interacted with his subjects, the more he agreed with Gamri in his own twisted, sordid way. It wasn't just about him getting powerful. They needed to grow as well, the people. And for something to grow, it cannot be suffocated under your grasp. Tyranny was out, but he hadn't softened completely as he was still quite cold towards those who had attempted to double-cross him. Reward your people and punish your enemies. Speaking of which, he had his eyes on the heaters. This shady bunch had recently made many efforts to acquire information that even the Empire did not possess, which was a rarity. He knew that, given the chance, Elek would not hesitate at all to backstab him if he was given a chance, and Kula did not want him to get said chance. So he tasked them with coordinating the rebuilding efforts on the planets, something that, in an ironic punishment, was heavily regulated by his quirks. Let's see how you like additional paperwork and overly complicated manners of proceeding things and bureaucracy elect. That would keep him busy, he thought. He was aware that there were some naysayers, so to speak, 
Commander Sorbet wasn't too keen on Kula lowering the war activities, but for now, he complied. For now. The Emperor came to the understanding that seeking additional conflict was wearing his empire thin, and as such, he was now in the divide phase rather than the conquer phase, and neither Vegeta nor Son Goku's son were bothering him, so this to him felt like a victory, finally. After a few years more of testing, experiments, and him having to smell kelp more than he would like to, Kikano announced that the prototype of the new healing machine was ready. The short scientist wanted to make some tests on Wing's subjects first, but Kula refused. He was ready to take the chance. And if anyone should make sure that the thing worked, it was himself. Obviously, all his advisors weren't too happy about this, as it required the Emperor to become vulnerable for a short period of time, as the cybernetics had to be disassembled. It wasn't a pleasant process, but he agreed to it himself. Particularly, all the cranium upgrades were pretty risky to remove, but he didn't become who he was now by avoiding risk. In fact, risk was what fueled him, as he once again became broken apart. He felt slightly better though, as this time it was on his own terms. He was taken into the new healing machine and safely placed there. He felt as the fluid started to fill the chamber, as he was breathing into a mask that was about to send him into a deep and satisfying sleep. He had dreams of ultimate power and the next evolution of his species. And once he attained it, his next steps will become known. Visiting Earth would be a nice start, although unbeknownst to Kula, he wouldn't be the only recent extraterrestrial arrival. Someone wanted to awake something ancient there. Something was mentioned to him by his father a long time ago. But still, this was a worry for tomorrow. But now, there was only slumber, which would end up with his rebirth. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now.